Good evening and welcome to another edition of What's Happening in Stark County. Susie Vitale couldn't be here tonight. She's not feeling well, so we hope you're back on your feet soon. I'm Pat Perkins. Our first two guests this evening are here to talk to us about a conference for teachers that's coming up. It's being co-sponsored by the Canton Jewish Confederation Federation. Federation. <laughs> I'm sorry, and Malone College. And this is B. Laron, and you are one of the co-chairmen for it. And Barbara Turkotal, who was a Holocaust survivor. Tell us a little bit about this conference. This is the second year that we work together with Malone and with the Ohio Council of Holocaust Education uh, that uh, we have a conference for teachers from high school, middle school, private schools, Catholic schools that uh, come and learn for uh, from August 5th to August 9th will be this conference at Malone that uh, they learn about the Holocaust, what happened, why it happened, and in what way it proceeded. And uh, uh, there is great interest among the teachers. And last year we had representation from 30 different schools. It was a very big success. And one by word of mouth, everybody was talking about it and requested we continue. So we hear that this year registration is very good also. Good. I noticed also in the brochure you're going to teach us how to teach it and why we are supposed to teach that it. That is the, the main purpose, is really mm -hmm. to instruct the teachers how to go about this, uh, how, how what to teach, what material, what films to use. Mm -hmm. Some things that you do and something you don't do in, in the schools, you know, when you talk about the Holocaust. There is great interest in, in the Holocaust because there is so much violence in the world and in this country, racism, stereotyping, it just never goes away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it seemed to grow lately. And so this is a part of teaching the student how to resolve conflicts, how to learn to respect each other, how to respect differences, different races, different people, different religions. And every teacher that is uh, teaching it has a great success. If it, they, they have the information, uh, the, the student produce good art, good poetry. I'm talking about Star County and all the area around, you know, because the teachers that came to us were not only from Canton, they came from Carroll uh, County, from Helms County, from all around. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's wonderful that you're doing this because we really, we don't have classes in college that tell us about right. this, that teach us. Tell us about some of the speakers that you're going to have. Okay, every, every day is dedicated to another topic. The first one will be the historical background. In the morning we have more uh, serious lectures. Uh, my husband is one of the speakers. Mm -hmm. He's a survivor, same run. He will uh, talk about the historical background of the, of the Holocaust. And Judy ben Bendermeer, she's a professor from Econu. She will talk also about historical background and mm -hmm. experiences of women in the Holocaust. She just wrote a book about the subject. And, uh, and on Monday, and, uh, that is Monday, and afternoon we will show films, and uh, and there will be discussion, and also methodology how to teach. On the second day, we will have a, a material speakers that will be speaking on Tuesday, August 6, will be overview of literature of the Holocaust. Sue Mishap is a professor of the Holocaust. She will be in charge. And we have the outstanding writer, speaker, Alicia Appelman German, that coming from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. She's the writer of that book, and she will speak. And in the afternoon, we have a film that was taken in North Canton in a play that was, I never saw another butterfly presented by the children and some adult of North Canton. Mm -hmm. And Mary McEnway, she's the director, she will present that film. And there will be discussion, how you get the children to motivate them to do such presentation. On the next day that we have a dialogue, uh, it was religious leader overview. It will be the, on Wednesday with Christian and Jewish perspective with Reverend Amy Shaw and Rabbi David, so David Saltman. They will talk about the religious aspect and some kind of problem that, that we have with that. Mm -hmm. and, and later on, we have a speaker that will be the di regional director of ADL that will be speaking. I have here the brochure here mm -hmm. on uh, the internet, hate material that goes through the internet and 
this is a new book that came by the Anti-Defamation League, and Cliff Severin is going to speak about that. And the next day, the, on Thursday, will be the day that we will discuss survivors and liberators. This is always the peak of interest, mm -hmm. survivors and liberators. That's where Barbara will speak, and Sam will speak, and Dr. Stapholz will be talking, and Bob Stubenrau, which is one of the liberators, and he was an official photographer of the army. Uh, in the afternoon, we will have a film. That's where I, uh, I have some pictures from the yes. film by Spielberg. Uh, uh, Spielberg, they've interviewed survivors, including the survivors in Canton. Mm -hmm. Barbara, her husband, my husband, and uh, Mark Turkelta, Barbara's son, one of the uh, interviewer, interviewers that come around in units, and they, they interview the people all over the country, survivors, and in Canton, they did it also. So we'll show one of the films uh, uh, of Spielberg. The last day will be all methodology. And we will discuss with the teachers all kind of programs, inclu including there will be a program by the uh, students and teachers that are doing some program in the, um, um, it will be by the Urban League of Canton. Mm -hmm. So you see we included a lot of possibilities, a lot of people, a lot of teachers, and there will be presentation of teachers that had very successful programs. Very good. This is, I can't wait. Barbara, tell us of your story. Well, every time that I am, I'm asked to speak about it, I think to myself, uh, why am I putting myself through this? Because it's really <laughs> not easy for me yeah. to speak. And then I hear uh, from time to time that there are people that deny completely that there even was a, a Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then of course, I begin to be very uh, feel this urgency. My goodness, how can I mean? It's uh, probably uh, one of historical events that have been uh, the, so uh, so uh, documented, so well documented, and yet uh, there still uh, there is still denial. So. Uh, and then I think to myself, how many Holocaust survivors really are anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I was born in 1934, so I'm 63, uh, uh, going on 64, and uh, so here, here I am. Uh, how many there are younger than I am, or you know, and the older ones are dying out. Uh, who is going to who is going to to really bear witness? So, right. so the urgency comes. Uh, uh, my introduction to war was really uh, like <laughs> like any war. Uh, we had so many since then. Uh, it was. Um, uh, just before the war, my family was a very uh, average family, like anybody here from North Canton. <laughs> there was father and mother, and I had three sisters. Uh, we lived in a nice house uh, near a river, and uh, very pleasant and very wonderful memories I have of that. And then one Sunday uh, morning, uh, as we were playing, there was shrieking noises and uh, and bombs were falling, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's how I was uh, introduced to to war. Uh, I was about five, five and a half years old. I didn't really understand what's happening, but I felt that uh, something bad is about to happen. And soon things began to change. Uh, very soon, I remember the Nazi army marching to our city. I was born in Vilno. It's a very large uh, metropolitan city, uh, capital of Lithuania now. At that time, it was Poland. And uh, soon after this, uh, uh, we were deported from our homes. Uh, taken uh, to, to ghettos. Uh, I remember distinctly the march to ghetto. It was very painful. I couldn't understand why I have to leave my house. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and remember, uh, remember the word in, in German, raus, 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 schnell, schnell. Uh, um, and uh, I remember some things, uh, uh, life in ghetto. It was, uh, I experienced uh, hunger humiliation, degradation, uh, uh, didn't understand why, uh, you see, and um, then separation from the family. My father uh, knew that uh, we will not survive if we will stay together, 
So my family got separated and he arranged that for a, a Christian family to come and uh, smuggle us uh, from ghetto. That is uh, my sister, younger sister and myself mm -hmm. and uh, to live uh, with them in nearby village. So, and my father joined partisans and my mother uh, was expecting at that time, so she couldn't uh, uh, go with anybody. So she was hiding in, in ghetto. There were, there were places, uh, very few places to hide, but that's where she uh, remained. And uh, uh, we, we, were, we were living with this uh, family in nearby village. But even then became too difficult for these people to keep us because they were really uh, in great danger for uh, to, to, to be killed if, mm -hmm. they, if they hide a Jewish child. My sister was only three and a half years old then. She was really a baby. And uh, well, soon after this, I, I overheard that they're going to, to take us take us to Gestapo that I knew I didn't know exactly what Gestapo is but I f knew that it's not very good mm -hmm. so I ran away from there and uh, we were lucky enough to 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 meet a priest on the way uh, who who asked us if we are Jewish well there were at that time really no other children were homeless uh, at least uh, most mostly were Jews he didn't answer he didn't uh, ask for my answer. He asked me only if I would like to go with him. And we quickly said yes. And um, he took us. He took us and we he took us to a convent. And uh, that's where we remain most of, most of uh, the rest remaining of the war. Um, the life in convent, of course, we felt very secure and uh, um, they helped us a lot and mm -hmm. uh, thank for grace of God and the nuns. Uh, and they really, that's how we survived. Uh, 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 two years after the war, I didn't know that the war was over because nobody really bothered to, to tell us. Is there, a, now this is you and your sister. Myself you took your sister and, sister and ran away. Yes. Oh my golly. Um, <laughs> Of course, there are a lot of other things that were happening on sure. the way, but um, that's a lot of essence, courage for a little yes. girl. Yes, I look at my ch grandchildren right now that are about that age, and I think to myself, my goodness, my that's goodness, right. that's how old I was when I had to uh, think for myself and make mm -hmm. decisions, not only for myself, but also for my sister. Uh, my mother survived and found us uh, uh, somebody. She kept looking for my other sisters and my father. And of course, uh, it took her about two years until uh, she found what happened to them. And then somebody told her that they saw a, a, a tall, thin girl that, they, that answered to the description uh, that she was uh, presenting and that perhaps it's your daughter. And uh, so she did uh, go to that church and um, I was singing in the choir. And found you there. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. <laughs> oh yeah. my. I was one of the lucky. I want you to know that a uh, million and a half children perished in Europe and they are just uh, lying in unmarked graves. Uh, I was one of the lucky, and there are not too many that uh, really uh, lived through on this. Well, you certainly were. <laughs> now, you have a keynote speaker that's going to be there on August 5th. On August 5th, on Monday night at 7.30 at Canton Jewish Center, which is right next building to Malone. It's open to the public, it is free, and Alicia, the one that the authors mm -hmm. of this book that also was a child, at that time, and she tells her story. She's a very fine speaker, and we invite the community. It will be at the Jewish Center. You're welcome to come. And we really express uh, our appreciation to the community, to the teachers of this community, and to Malone College that really found well, fine cooperation with the Jewish community to work on such an important project of education. Now, if anybody wants information for this, they should call Malone College? They can call Malone College, Dr. Sumi, chef. Okay. Or 
call myself Bill Haron at Canton Jewish Federation. Okay. Either one of us will Great. welcome people to register for the co for the course, a whole course, or just the audit the course, or just come to any specific lecture that they would like to hear. I gave you more or less right. the outline. Thank you so much, ladies, for being with us tonight. We're looking forward to this. And I signed up, so I'll be there. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Our next guest is Reverend Stephen, and you are from the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church here in Canton. That is correct. And you've just held a conference here that had to do with Byzantine music. Yes. Your 49th conference with a lot of, of choirs and people involved in this. Let's talk a second about the history of Byzantine music. That's fine. Byzantine music was first instituted in the Byzantine Empire and that's where it gets its name, from the Byzantium. Byzantine music as introduced by Romanos of Melodius, the hymnographer, and also John Damascus, who founded uh, Byzantine music and the scale of Byzantine music. And they are both saints of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Now we say the Byzantium and we're talking about Emesa in Syria, and we're talking about Damascus. Why are we talking about that particular part in the world, which is in the Middle East, and we're talking about Greek Orthodoxy? At that time, the Byzantium stretch, we're talking about a period of 556 or 749, whenever the Byzantium stretched from Europe into the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And these hymnographers were indeed Orthodox. And this is the reason where we get the roots of Byzantine music. And as we had immigrants to this country, naturally they brought their customs, their traditions. The first thing that, they, that the uh, Greek Orthodox people did when they came to this country was to build churches and to build schools to promote their culture and their religion. The first colony of Greek people came actually from Asia Minor and settled in St. Augustine, Florida. The first community, Greek community, was established in New Orleans, Louisiana. Our first archbishop to this country that we really knew was Athenagoras, who eventually left this country in 1949 and became the patriarch, His All Holiness of Constantinople who is the leader of the Greek Orthodox faith. From then on, it, uh, the, the culture spread, the religion spread. And we have somewhat, something like about 500 communities in the United States alone, 10 dioceses including Canada and South America. And from there, Byzantine music was translated into European music. Mm -hmm. This is how our, our, our children learned how to read Byzantine music. It was translated from the Byzantine to the European. It's very difficult to read Byzantine music. And only those who are cantors or those who are in the clergy are able to read Byzantine music. And after it was translated from the Byzantine to the European music, is when our, was when our uh, choirs got hold of the music and started uh, Byzantine choirs in this country. Now, is the European music the same as we know music, the yes. same scale that we know? Okay. The, the exact same sc okay. scale. But John Damascus was the first one who founded the Byzantine scale, which is similar to the European scale, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except they're a little different notes. <laughs> now, we, how do we form Mefcox and how have we gotten into this 49th Annual Choir Convention. The beginning of this so-called Mefcox organization, mm -hmm. four, four priests really were God inspired enough to have this dream of forming a, a tri-state choir, tri-state federation of choirs, mm -hmm. which in, really included West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. These priests were John 
Geranius of St. John the Divine in Wheeling, West Virginia, Father John Kapanakas of Annunciation, Akron, Ohio, Father John Barris of Holy Trinity, Steubenville, Ohio, and last but not least, Father James Budas of All Saints Greek Orthodox Church, Weirton, West Virginia. Those four had a dream, had a vision, and from that grew the so, the so called, as we say, the Mefcocks. And these Mefcocks, of course, these choirs, are, uh, are comprised of 48 Greek Orthodox choirs from Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, upstate New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Canada, most of whom, of course, will be represented at this convention. What we do, we pick a city each year where we'll have these conventions. Mm -hmm. And this year, the uh, 49th convention happens to be the city of Canton, Ohio. Next year, we plan our 50th in Detroit, Michigan. Now, we've only got 30 seconds left. That's fine. L let me ask you, do we have a choir here in Canton? Yes, we do. We have two choirs here in Canton, St. Caralambos uh, on 25th Street and a Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church uh, at Fairhaven. That's wonderful. If someone's interested in this music, when there's any concerts, what's the number they can call? They can call uh, Holy Trinity 494-8770 to receive and receive more information as far as Byzantine music is concerned. And we also welcome them to attend any services we may have, either at St. Caralambos or at Holy Trinity. Thank you so much for You're being quite with welcome. us. We thank you. Really interesting. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Our next two guests are kind of special to me. One of them is my son, Josh Anderson, who is a team player, and the other one is Bob Formitt, who is a coach of the Cathedral Eagles and who I have just gotten to know, and it's been my pleasure. Bob, you um, coach a team called the Cathedral Eagles. Can you tell us the purpose of this team? It's a team designed to have youngsters in the seventh and eighth grade that uh, are skilled players around Star County. Uh, develop their skills, develop character. It's a sponsorship through uh, Cathedral of Life Church, their sports ministry program. And so it's a combined program for advanced players in Star County as well as a ministry of the church. Okay. Josh, what grade do you have to be in to play on this, one, this team? Um, upcoming eighth graders play on this team, and uh, it's a traveling team out of Canton. Where have you gone? Um, we've been in uh, our tournaments all throughout Ohio and, P and Pennsylvania. Um, we play Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, places like that. Okay. And you've got a big uh, tournament coming up, don't you? Yes, we play in national tournaments. It's uh, coming up in a week, so we're getting pretty excited for that. <laughs> yeah, you are. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Bob? National tournament's really exciting. We play 25 games. Uh, of various teams around North America. Uh, our leading rebounder, Josh, has broken his wrist, and we're hoping that he can play with us in Nationals uh, this next week. We'll see how the physician rules, and we'll go from there. These youngsters uh, are very spirited, uh, competitive youngsters, as you could well imagine. And uh, uh, Josh, uh, when he broke his wrist here not long ago, wouldn't tell us, and played a couple of games with a broken wrist <laughs> before we figured out that right. he was hurt. So we have we have very, very aggressive kids. We're going to be having tryouts uh, here in the, in the fall okay. of 96 for the 97 team, and um, uh, we would encourage folks to uh, give a call to the church office. What's the number uh, there? It's 493-4111. Okay. And for further information, they can call there, and youngsters can try out with this team. Okay. Tell us about your coaches. Coaches uh, are former college players from Florida State University, uh, from uh, University of South Dakota. Um, I am uh, a 10-year experience coach in basketball and baseball. 
and, uh, and with the uh, Canton Jackson Select Baseball Association here in Stark County and uh, National Sports Concepts, uh, which is an organization affiliated with Cathedral of Life Sports Ministries. Great, and you've got a lot going on there in your sports ministries. It's really exciting Very what's true. going to be happening out there. Joshua, what's your um, your uh, seventh grade record? Um, our team record this season is eight and two. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I've been to most of those games, <laughs> so I can attest to that. Tell us about the sponsorship of this team. Sponsorship is is both through Cathedral. They allow us to use their gymnasium and their facilities. Uh, Universal Tire Mold. Uh, a corporation out of Summit County uh, has put uh, a significant amount of money into the into the team. Uh, RCF and Associates, which is one of my corporations, uh, has sponsored uh, the team. Uh, Cyrac Moore Insurance Company has uh, put money into the team. It's quite a an um, undertaking, as you can well imagine, to have a traveling team of this magnitude uh, traveling around in the summer. And mm -hmm. so uh, money has to be uh, granted to uh, the association to be able to to uh, make this happen effectively. Right. I know when we had the opening banquet, even chicken uh, Chick -fil -A. Fil -A, um brought food in. It's just, it's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We have uh, a lot of... Uh, variety of, of businesses in the area that, that help uh, with dinners right. and uh, speakers are willing to donate their time to come and, and uh, uh, donate their time to talk with the youngsters and do coaching. Right. <clears throat> now again, when are the tryouts? Tryouts will be in the fall and we don't have a date selected yet, but okay. they should call the church office okay. for further information. And that's... 493-4111. Okay, great. <coughs> now, you're going up to Toledo. Yes. <laughs> With or without a broken arm, you're, going up, you're right. going up anyway, right? Right. So, good luck to you guys. Thank you. And uh, I know it's a great bunch of guys, and I think the experience up there will be well worth everything. Thanks again for being with us tonight, and good luck at those national tournaments. If you'd like your program or its announcements on the CTC, what's happening in Stark County, or the calendar of events, you can write to us, the Community Television Consortium, Post Office Box 8335, Canton, Ohio. That zip is 44711. Or you can give us a call at 493-8925. What's Happening airs on Tuesday nights at 6 and Thursday nights at 6.30 on Warner Cable, Channel 11, and on Thursday nights at 7.30 on Masson Cable, Channel 50. Thanks again for being with us. That's it tonight for What's Happening in Stark County.